In this video, I'm going to talk about five ways that you can create a design that stands out, and these are all going to be related to text and fonts. Let's go. Hey guys, it's Juna with Detour Shirts. Thanks for joining me on this video. In this video, I wanted to talk about design, creating your design to make it stand out. In this video, I'm going to talk about five simple ways that you can do uh, in your design, and these are all related to text and fonts. And uh, so I, I think this is going to help you make your design stand out. And you want your designs to stand out from the crowd anyway, so that people will pick yours instead. Now, these aren't guaranteed to get you sales, but these are simple ways that you can do instead of just making simple font choices. I'm going to show you some other ways that you can do um, to make your design stand out. I'm going to show you examples of what I mean. So you're going to want to stay to the end to see all five. Uh, and it's going to be real easy uh, to do these. They're, they're not very difficult, but they may be things that you might not have thought about. So let me get into it. I'll, we'll start with number one and go to number five. So the first one that I want to talk about is something that most people are already doing, and that is text variation. What I mean by that is creating texts that are different sizes, maybe different colors, maybe the kerning's a little bit different, not just having straight text that, you know, or Helvetica, boom, 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 boom. We want to make some kind of variation in it. And you can mix fonts too. So I'm going to show you some examples of what I mean by text variations. Okay, so here are three examples. Now there's lots of examples and these are just graphic examples. I don't want you to take these, uh, what, sa what it says on these t-shirts and use it in your design. We're just looking at the graphic um, part of it, right? So you can see text variation. This text, this font is bigger than this font, right? We're having variations in size here. This one has variation in size too, but also variations in spacing. So uh, not only is this one smaller, but this one's bigger. And then look at how the letters are stretched out. That's the kerning uh, in there. So we're stretching out the words to fit. And of course, variation in color too uh, is another one. And this is a variation in font. So you have this font here, which is different than this font, which is different than this font. And then they do it again, this font, this font, this font. So uh, lots of variation here. So variation is really good to make things stand out. You can see these stand out if you just had uh, regular text like Helvetica text all the way down here. It wouldn't be as strong as what you did here with different colors and different fonts. Same thing here. If you didn't stretch it out, it wouldn't be as strong uh, if all of these were the same size. And it probably wouldn't have fit too. So you got to think about that. Uh, you can see these. this is smaller because there's more words here. So of course you have to make it smaller to fit here. So text variation um, is really nice because it gives variety to your designs and makes things stand out. So text variation is really easy to do. I think anybody with a graphic program can do this. You can do it in Canva, any of the uh, apps, uh, Canva, Kittle, whatever. So uh, make sure to think about uh, spacing, color, uh, font choices, mixing them together. Uh, you can use those in a, as an example, but just giving it some a little bit of variation will help your design stand out. Even if it's just a text design, especially if it's just a text design, you want it to stand out just a little bit more. So some of these have graphics with them, but you can do it with just a text design as well. So you can make your design look different than other designs out there by changing some of these things in, in fonts, and that will just help your design stand out just a little bit more. So the next one I want to talk about, number two, is similar and this is text orientation. So instead of just changing how big and small and the colors, we're going to change how it looks. So instead of having it just straight across like this, we could turn it on its side or have it come down like this, you know, one letter at a time or have it curve this way or curve this way or lots of different things. So this is how you move the text around. You can have it at a diagonal like this. So lots of different examples and I'll show you some examples here. There's only three of them that I'm going to show you, but there's lots of different examples, right? So here are some examples of text orientation. Now, again, I want to stress, don't copy these because Yellowstone is a TV show. So you don't want to do it that, but you can see uh, the way they did this t-shirt is up and down, right? They took the letters and instead of turning it on its side, it just, you have the um, first letter, then the second letter like this. So it's kind of a more vertical than horizontal. Now this one's different. We, we see this a lot where it's uh, curved up here and curved down here. So the orientation is just a little bit different. Instead of having it straight on top and straight on bottom, we have that arc. And this one we, we're seeing a lot um, lately, at least I've seen a lot lately where it's kind of this wavy 
thing here. So many different ways to change the way your um, text is flowing, your fonts are flowing. Uh, and be creative with this. And you can see this definitely stands out. I think one of the reasons why this is very popular right here is because not only does it look 70s, has that 70s style, but the wave just makes it look different, right? So it stands out from everything else, especially something that would be straight. So play around with different text orientations. Try one on its side, try one at a diagonal. Uh, you can try this with just text designs as well. I think this will really help your design stand out from people who are just doing it straight. Now it may depend on what kind of graphics you're using. You saw the one in the middle where there's a rounder graphic. So of course you're gonna have a arc on that and, and below, but there's lots of different ways. Try the, the wavy thing. It, it's really cool, a really easy way to make your design stand out. And there's lots of different tools that you can use on Canva and, and things like that. I have a bunch of videos on my in my YouTube to show you how to do some wavy things like that or how to turn it really easy. So for number three, I wanted to share with you something that you may not have known about. You've probably seen it before and that is alternate styles. So this is where a letter looks a little bit different. This is where there may be a swash here or maybe something underneath or I'll show you some examples of that. And then I'll also show you some examples like on myfonts.com on where to find or how to find fonts that have these built in. So here are some examples of what I mean for alternate styles. So look at this R here. Instead of just ending right here, it kind of goes under the O. Uh, take, take a look at this M right here. It has this right here. And then this M right here kind of comes around again with the R and the K kind of goes under. Take a look at this A and H, you know, you see how it kind of comes up like this. Now there are some fonts that do this already and you have to go to the glyphs palette to see them. I'll show you how to find that. Um, but you see that and, and here too, in this script font, instead of just ending right here, this T uh, is an alternate style and it comes up like this and this M comes around and goes over like that. So finding fonts that have these alternate styles can really help in your design um, when you're creating it. So a good way to get some of these alternate styles is to find fonts online that actually have these built in. So I'm gonna show you one way to find it. These are on my fonts, but there's lots of places you can find it uh, on there. So let's go to myfonts.com and I'll show you um, where to find it or how to look for these and what they look like. All right, so here I am on my fonts. If you wanna look up for fonts that have these kinds of things, here are some keywords that I would put in. So one thing you can type in is flourishes. So I'll do that. And you can see these are some flourishes that come in there, but uh, there's some fonts that actually have them. So here are some. Uh, this one has that fancy thing there. Look at this T, right? So some, some nice flourishes there. Um, let's see what else we can type in here. Let's go up. Uh, instead of flourishes, you can type swashes. Uh, kind of the same thing, but these these kind of come underneath. So you can see these right here, like I showed with the H and this T. Got some swashes. Got this underneath on this one. This this is kind of cool with the T, right? So some nice ones with swashes. Let's do font glyphs up here in Google and do images, and you can see some some cool font glyphs here here. So you just have to do a search and find them. And they, you can see these already just stand out. If you put that on a t-shirt, that'd be really cool, right? So uh, have fun trying to find some of those. Uh, I may have to do a video. Let me know if you want a video of, of fonts that have uh, alternate glyphs and things like that. But the way to use them is uh, to go into something like Affinity Designer and go into the glyphs palette and it will show you. So let me show you in Affinity Designer how that works. So here I am in Affinity Designer. You can see I have text already on here on the screen. I'm just gonna show you where to find those alternate glyphs. So I'm gonna change this to a font. Well, first, uh, let's go to the Glyphs palette. So it's right here, Glyph Browser. If you don't have it open, you'll have to go and, and turn it on, go to View and find the Glyph Browser. It's usually up here, but you can see this one, when I do it, um, it has a ton of Glyph things. Uh, pretty crazy, like icons. But if I go to, um, let's say this one, you can see all the alternate stuff here. And if I just want like a Y, 
that's different than the regular Y. So the regular Y is like this, but the alternate Y is like that, right? So uh, you can go in here and do it and, and just try different ones. So you just double click on it and you have that E. So let's say I'm typing something uh, like, like five, okay? But I want a different B here. So I'll highlight here and then I'll pick this B instead. You see how that's a little different? Maybe I want a different Y here, so I'll pick this Y instead. Now that one doesn't work as well, but uh, maybe this Y instead. Whoops. Right? And you can play around with it. Now, this isn't the only font that does it, so we, we come in here and maybe try this one. And you can see this one has a ton of different stuff, so if we want a different letter, you can come down here and try some of these other things. So let's say we want an E. We want that E instead. So lots of different ways to do this. When you find the font that you like, load it up in Affinity Designer and have fun with this. You don't have to draw this out. You can use some of their things that are already here. So that's a good segue to number four. And number four is what I like to call fancier fonts. So you can go in and find some fancier fonts to use that have some of those glyphs, maybe those are the ones, or you can find ones that are filled with different things. So I've done a video like this right here on Canva where the, there's lots of different fonts that have patterns in them already, or fonts that are created for a certain holiday or something like that. Uh, you can go through and use some of those. Here are some examples of what I mean when I talk about fancier fonts. So here are some examples of fancier fonts like this one right here. Wild about reading. Remember, don't copy the words here. I'm just showing you different styles. This may be some of these may be copyrighted or trademark. So, but look at these. This this helps it stand out, right? Like the um, the dots in here, the colors. This one has that pattern, the cheetah pattern under here, so that makes it stand out. If this just was straight Helvetica text, readers are leaders. It wouldn't be as strong as this is, right? This makes it stand out. So this font right here looks like a rope, so that kind of sells the design, right? Because we have a cowboy, rope, bandana, so it all kind of works together, and this makes it stand out more than if you just used a plain kind of font. So uh, think of different ways that you can use uh, these kinds of fancier fonts, these fill-in fonts, these uh, more decorative fonts to make your design stand out. So that's one nice thing about using things like Canva and Vexels and Kittle is they have some of those fancier fonts built in to the apps. So if you go on Canva, like I said, you can go and find some of those fonts and make them part of your design. And of course, make sure to use fonts that relate to the topic that you're doing. So in the case of like the Howdy Cowboy one, the rope font was very appropriate. Now you may not want to use something um, that doesn't match that because then it, it doesn't kind of help your design. So think about all of those things that work together. Uh, and I think that's a great way to make your design stand out from the crowd is to have just a little pump of artwork in it or just make it fancier. So my tip number five is not to have any text at all and just do a graphic. Now, your graphic's gonna have to tell a story, so it's gonna have to be strong. You can't just put any graphic on there, but a lot of times you don't need text on the design and it can sell well. And one of the advantages of not having text on there is not having to translate. So let me show you some examples of what I mean. One of the things you might wanna look at is to have something like kind of a mashup. So this one is eggs and bacon, but it's also a smiley face and I believe it's green eggs and am kind of related to, so careful on that. But this one has a, a cat with a mushroom, right? Kind of mashing up those two things. Uh, and so it's great for people who love both of those things. Now this one is uh, kind of funny with a leprechaun dabbing. So he's actually doing something. So it's telling a story, right? So all of these are kind of telling a story. Uh, and these do really well on Merch by Amazon as well as Redbubble because they're more graphic related. So think about that when you're doing the design, maybe do a design without any text at all. So one thing you have to be careful about if you're just doing graphics is to not just take the graphics from Canva or from Vexels or whatever. You're gonna have to kind of mash it together yourself. So you're gonna have to make it a little different than what's already out there. Unless you're drawing it yourself, uh, this is a big advantage for people who are artists. They can draw original artwork that nobody has done and those uh, you won't have any problems. But if you're not the type that are gonna draw anything and you need to get designs from something, you're gonna have to kind of mix things together and not just put the graphic because 
I think on Canva, you, you can't actually do that. You can't actually just take a graphic, put it on a t-shirt, take another graphic, put it on the t-shirt. You're gonna have to kind of mix things together and make it a kind of an original design. So just be very careful on that, but it can be very powerful just having a graphic on a, on a shirt or something, uh, a product, because again, you don't need to translate it for different markets. So for a recap, here are the five ways to stand out, uh, text edition. So first, uh, text variation, we talked about changing the size, multiple fonts and things like that. You can see the examples. Uh, text orientation is how you manipulate the text or do you want it a diagonal or a curve or up and down. Uh, then the alternate styles, remember look for those glyphs, those flourishes, those swashes. Uh, you can find those things by searching on places like my phone or the internet, just Google search those things. And then you want some fancier fonts. Now Canva has a, a bunch of those. I know Kiddo has a bunch of those. Look for handwritten fonts, look for cursive fonts, look for fonts with patterns in them uh, and fonts that were made for specifically maybe for a holiday or things like that. And then uh, if you're up to it, do one with no text at all. Do something that's just graphics. Again, uh, if you're an artist, make something original. If you're not an artist, then make something original that's not just uh, something you take from Canva. You're going to have to kind of put things together to make it different than what's already out there. So those are the five tips in this video to make your design stand out uh, using text or not using text. I also have some other ways, uh, this video right here to help your design stand out. You may want to watch that one next. Uh, there's lots of different ways to make your design stand out and you want to make your design stand out so people pick your design uh, when looking through everybody out there. So hopefully this video is really helpful for you. Thanks again for watching and as always guys, keep creating and keep learning. I'll see you on the next one.